Hello students, welcome to another tutoring session for class 8 English and uh, this session 2 we will be continuing with the same poem that we did the last time. So students, uh, during the last session uh, we did something called artistic media, right? I stopped at artistic media. So I told you that when I say artistic media, the particular uh, story or the poem or the novel or the particular idea is taken into different forms in the form of uh, films, cartoon characters, movies, and then even paintings also, right? So uh, that is the idea about artistic media and about this uh, poet Aesop and I told you we already discussed that there are so many other fables that he wrote isn't it so some of the other fables like the ant and the cricket some of the fables that he wrote were uh, the boy who cried wolf so this story you must be familiar you must have heard when you were smaller the boy who cried wolf so there was one certain boy who used to lie that wolves were coming to attack him isn't that so when the real wolf came at, uh, at the end uh, nobody came in to rescue him isn't it so after that he died right so that fable uh, tells us the lesson that we we shouldn't lie isn't it Another example of a fable can be the honest woodcutter. So in this story, you must have already heard about it. In this story, uh, there was a woodcutter, a certain woodcutter who was chopping woods in the forest nearby a river. And then suddenly his uh, axe fell into the river, isn't that? And then uh, the river goddess came out with a gold uh, asked and asked him whether it was his or not and then he very honestly replied that his is a very old iron axe and then this gold axe is not his isn't it so that is why the goddess became very happy and then uh, rewarded the golden axe to him and then after that he sold the axe and became rich so from there also we learned that we have to be honest right and Another very fam famous fable of Aesop is the tortoise and the hare. So you must have all heard about this story, the tortoise and the hare. They were both friends and they started, uh, one day they do a running race, isn't it? And we all know that the hare is a very uh, fast animal and then the tortoise is supposed to be slow. But the opposite happens in the story. The here it rests in the middle and then that is how uh, while he is sleeping the tortoise very slowly overtakes him isn't that so all these fables the boy who cried wolf the honest woodcutter the tortoise and the uh, hare all this were written by the same poet okay And if you have understood about various adaptations, about the fables, and then about artistic media, let us now, since in the last class we have already completed the poem, let us now try into uh, looking into the summary of the poem in short, okay? So the summary of the poem in short is there was a certain uh, cricket who was uh, lazy and who sang all throughout the summer season and he didn't save anything for the winter, right? And then when the winter suddenly came, he got so worried there was nothing in his home. So what he did was he went to the ant, the miserly ant, the stingy ant and then begged, something, uh, begged for something to eat and then to you know protect him from the cold winter a shelter but the ant first asked him what he was doing all throughout the summer season all throughout the sunny days all throughout the good days but the cricket very frankly replied that i have been singing all along i didn't do anything so the ant got very frustrated and then 
told the cricket that we ants, we never borrow anyone and then we never lend anyone also. We do our own work and then we never depend on others. So that is what the ant told the cricket, right? And the uh, ant at the end said that uh, you should, you know, dance all throughout this winter also, just like you did during the summer season. And then drove the cricket away without giving anything to the cricket right and then at the end of the poem the poet also says that there are so many uh, two-legged anim uh, creatures like the cricket also so that is supposed to uh, have a comparison with the human beings people who are lazy who don't work for our future isn't that so in short that is the summary of the poem and when we look into this poem, it has a moral lesson. Moral. It has a moral lesson and it teaches us to be hardworking. It teaches us to be hardworking and then plan for the future. plan for the future so here we all know what hard working is isn't that somebody who works very hard and then uh, who never keeps their work pending isn't it so that is hard working and when we see the future see uh, Some example of preparing for future can be, suppose take the good students in your class, for example. They are good students, not just like that, isn't it? They are good students because they work hard in advance and then whatever homeworks or works that are being given, they do well and then they perform well in the exam also, during the test also. That is why they are known as good students, isn't it? So they work hard for the future. And suppose, for example, if the students, or, uh, if the good students, they fall sick, that if they fall sick also, since they have already prepared for the future, since they have already studied and kept for the exam, they won't find it very difficult, even if something bad happens to them, right? So we can understand that the moral of the poem is to be hardworking and plan for the future. And I gave you an example of the good students in your class, right? So the good students in your class or your classmates can be compared to the ant. And then the lazy ones, those who do things at the 11th hour in the last moment, and then those who are a little lazy, those can be compared to the cricket, right? So that is how we can draw a comparison, even in our real life also. So this uh, poem has great moral lesson to teach us. And now, if you can turn to your textbook, page number 23. Here, uh, there are some questions that are given in the textbook. These questions, they are not very difficult. If you have understood the poem, if you have listened carefully to the last session that we did, then uh, answering these questions will not be very difficult. Okay. And here, after the fourth question, there is a certain line given here. If you know a fable in your own language, narrate it to your classmates. So here, we already discussed that a fable is a story or a poem where the main characters are mostly animals, isn't it? And then uh, the end of the story also gives great moral lesson, right? So those are the basic characteristics of a fable. So for you also, if you are watching this uh, tutoring class online uh, or on television with your classmates, then your classmates must have come from different backgrounds or from different families, right? So uh, you can discuss among your friends and share your own fable stories, okay? So that you can learn from one another. And for me also, narrate it to your classmates. So I'll give you an example of a fable story. This fable story is about a pig and a dog. 
Okay, so this fable was narrated to me by my parents when I was small. Okay, so in the story, there was a certain uh, pig and a dog. They were domestic animals. We all know that this uh, pig and pigs and dogs they are domestic animals, right? So there were there were a certain pig and an, uh, and a dog, and they were they were domestic animals. And then they stayed with a certain farmer in a village. Okay, so. The farmer, he was a very rich farmer and he owned many plots of lands and farms. So every day he went to the fields to work and then the farmer also employed different, uh, many workers to work in the different fields because he cannot cover all the fields by himself. So that is why he employed many laborers in his farm. Okay. And in a certain farm, In a certain farm, uh, the farmer had given charge to the pig and the dog to work there in the field. Okay, so the farmer had many fields and a plot of lands and this field was especially kept aside for the pig and the dog to go and work there. Okay, and my parents, when I was small, they told me that uh, the animals during the ancient times, they used to speak like us. Okay, so here in this story also, the pig and the dog, they can speak, right? So every day they used to go to the field, but the pig and the dog, They stayed in the same house, they were friends, but they had different characters, okay? So here, the pig was very hardworking. Hardworking. And then honest also. So the pig was very hardworking and honest, and this dog, he was cunning and lazy. So that was the difference between them. Okay, one was hardworking. He, he used to work very hard and then very honest also. That means he didn't lie. And then for the dog, he was very cunning. When I say cunning, it would mean chalak or lying in Nagamis. Okay. So he was cunning and then he was very lazy also. So here in the story you can relate it with uh, the ant and the cricket somehow, right? So th this they had opposite characters and every day they used to go to the field and then the dog would just sit around in the uh, nearby the field and then go go to sleep for the whole day. And then for the pig he used to work for the whole day, very hard working. So he used to work for the whole day and before returning, right before returning, uh, remember the pig did all the work, isn't it? And right before returning home, what the dog did is, remember he's cunning. So what the dog would do is, he would go to the field and then start walking around the field, round and round. And then later they'll go back together. And when the farmer, the owner, uh, go and uh, went and checked the field, then all he saw was the footprints of the dog. So see, remember, the dog, dog is supposed to be very cunning, right? So uh, he didn't do the hard work, but at the end only he tried to cover up and show the owner that he had done all the work. So the later the owner would come back and then they would, he would start scolding the pig because he thought that he didn't do any work. And then for the dog, since he already saw the footprints, he re the owner really used to praise him. And then what the owner did as a form of punishment was, he let the pig sleep outside the house. Okay. And then for the dog, he slept with the owner. So that is how, uh, even to this day also, Pigs are suppo supposed to be outside of our house, isn't it? The uh, special kind of house is built for them. So that is why the pigs, they stay outside. And then for the dogs, it is 
uh, we keep them inside our house, right, to guard the house. So that is the uh, story that my parents told me. It is a fable. And then the moral that lesson that we learn from here is that we shouldn't fool our friends, isn't it? We shouldn't try to cover up, but we should be hardworking and honest. So that, you know, uh, because if we're cunning and lazy and try to trick our friends, then our friends might, you know, uh, lose their dignity or you know somebody might blame him right so that is why we should never you know fool our friends that is the fable that i'm sharing with you and then for you also you can share different fables or stories that you know between yourselves and let us look into another very important element in the poem. If you can go back to page number 21, page number 21, and see if you look at the very last word of each line in your poem, the very last word of each line in your poem, then you can see the words sing, you can underline it in your textbook, sing, spring, home, come, found, ground, see, tree. Me, bold, coal, ant, grant, rain, grain, borrow, tomorrow, sorrow, and then light, night, gay, say, wicked, cricket, to, true, too. So if you have underlined all these words, then you can see a certain similarity in the uh, words. They sound a little similar with one another, right? So that is known as rhyme scheme. So the rhyme scheme here, rhyme here would mean so, sounding similar with one another, right? The words. So when I say the word sing and spring, they sound similar with one another, isn't it? And then home and calm also sound similar with one another. Found, ground, see, tree, me. So all these words, they sound familiar with one another. So that is known as rhyme scheme. And we have in poetry, we have different rhyme schemes. Some rhyme schemes are in the form of A, B, C, D, E. And then some are in the form of A, C, B, D, E. And then some are A, B, D. So for this poem, for this poem, it is in the rhyme scheme of A, A, B, B, C, C, and I'll go back here, D, D, and D. So the rhyme scheme for this poem is A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, and D. So to understand it better, let us go to the rhyming words again. So here in the first line, spring, sing and spring is A, A. And then for home and come, it will be B, B. And then found ground will be C, C. And for the last three words in that paragraph, C, tree, me. So this tree, for the others, the two were rhyming, isn't it? It was all A, A, B, B, and then C, C. But for the last part, the three words, they are similar. So these are in pairs, and this one is in trees. So D, D, D here will be C, 3, and me. So those three, they are in the form of D, 
D and D. So, likewise, the remaining uh, words, the last word of the poem also follows the same pattern A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, and D. If you look into the next paragraph also, bold and cold, they follow A, A. Then the next line, ant and grant, B, B. The next one, rain, grain, follows the rhyme scheme of C, C. And then the last three words, borrow, tomorrow, sorrow. So these three, they rhyme with one another. So D, D, and D. So that is the rhyme scheme of this poem. And why are rhyming schemes important in poem is because suppose this poem, the ant and the cricket, suppose if you're meant to uh, memorize this poem, then if you know the rhyme scheme, the pattern of this uh, poem, then it'll uh, make the poem sound more beautiful. And then if you remember the last word, the rhyming, rhyming scheme of the words, then you will remember the poem also better. So rhyming scheme makes the poem sound beautiful and then we can remember it easily. And then uh, the rhyme scheme in poetry also shows that the, re the author, uh, the po sorry, the poet has uh, rich uh, use of words and different words are brought together to make it sound similar, right? So the poet uses a rich different kinds of words to make the poem uh, sound beautiful and then the words so that they can sound familiar. So that is why the rhyme scheme in poetry is important. And then students, uh, if you can look into some very important questions in the poetry, in the poem, then you'll be able to understand the poem better. And I'm very sure that your teachers must have given you notes, isn't it? So if you see this uh, tutoring classes and if we can discuss some important poem, points and then later if you read the notes, then you'll be able to understand the poem better. So the first caution that comes uh, to our mind when we study the poem is, in whose role do you find yourself? Students, so in whose role do you find yourself? Is it this one or this one? Even inside the class, among your classmates also, some students might be like the ant, right? preparing things in advance, always doing their homework like I told you earlier. And then they're always prepared for anything, any work that the teacher gives them, right? And then in the exam time, some students, they behave like the cricket, isn't it? Not prepare anything and then ask help from friends, right? So you yourself, you will know. Even if, you know, you don't say it loud to others, you will know in whose position you are as a student. So you can ask yourself that question as you read the poem. And then the second question that you can ask yourself or maybe discuss among your friends can be, who is the better person? I say person because these are animals, but they are, you know, characterized as uh, Here, they are the main characters, isn't it? So who is a better pe person? Is it the ant or the cricket? And why do you think so? See, the ant is supposed to be hardworking, but at the same time, stingy also, right? So was it uh, okay that the ant didn't share anything with the cricket? And was it good for this uh, one, this character, do not save anything for the future and ask help from others. So those are the questions that linger in our mind as we try to learn and understand the poem. And then what uh, lesson, what moral lesson does the end teaches us? It teaches us to be hardworking, to plan for the future 
and then keep everything safe so that any uh, emergency situation comes, you can then you can act likewise, isn't it? So the end give us a great moral lesson. We can say like that. And sometimes in nature, uh, instead of human beings, it is the nature and the animals that teaches us. Okay. So here in the poem, it is the ant who teaches us a great moral lesson, isn't it? And that is how, you know, we can retrospect ourselves, whether we have worked hard all along or not, whether we were good or not. So those are the, some of the things that the ant compel us to question ourselves. So the character, I think, compared to this two, I think this character is more important. I feel like that. You can, you know, ag agree or disagree with me, but for me, I feel that the ant has more uh, impaling character than the cricket. And then, in the last class also we were discussing, some crickets have four legs and some have two. So I told you that uh, this statement is uh, important from your exam point of view also because they'll give this particular line and might ask you to explain the statement also, right? So the point means that the fable is true for human beings as well. So this line, the last line of the poem, some crickets have four legs and some have two. So uh, this line is applicable not only for the animals but even to human beings also because we are the two-legged crickets. And then sometimes we don't do things uh, prior and then we panic in the end, we get worried, we ask for help and sometimes if we don't get the help then what will we do? What will be our reaction? Or are we supposed to follow the same pattern and not work hard in advance? So some of these are some of the things that uh, our, our, keep, uh, our minds keep asking as we try to understand the poem. And then another important uh, question that might come to your mind maybe, uh, what is your opinion of the ANTS principles? So here in the story, we all know that the ant didn't share anything with the cricket, isn't it? So some of you might be thinking, uh, like, the ant was so stingy, at least he should have given something to the cricket, right? Some of you might be thinking like that. And it is not uh, wrong also, it is quite true to some extent. I'll give you an example, students. Suppose a good student in the class, uh, he always do things, uh, whatever is being told to him by the teacher. And suppose his friend is lazy, and then the lazy friend will come and ask for homework that is already being done by the good one. And then the good student, he'll share the uh, homework with the lazy one. Then again, chances are there that the lazy student might come back again, isn't it? So eventually, it will become a habit, right? So it is like the good student is encouraging the lazy students to, you know, not work hard and then always depend on others, right? So if we encourage our friends, if they do something like that, then it is like encouraging them to never change, isn't it? or never learn anything from any kind of situation. So maybe uh, the ant denying the cricket was somehow, we can say, uh, right. Because in a way, suppose if the ant had helped the cricket and gave him something, then maybe the cricket would have come every winter and asked for something. That means all throughout summer, he would have just sang along, just doing merrymaking, and then later, at the back of his mind, he would know that he can always go back to the ant and ask for something, and then he will give him, right? So that is why, you know, denying the cricket, denying the cricket of food and shelter was maybe a great moral lesson for the cricket to learn, right? So that is what we can understand. And if you have different opinions regarding the statement, if you think that the ant had uh, done wrong by not helping 
his friend, then you can answer it likewise, no problem. But your answer should contain good points so that you can argue with the points and give your strong points, right? So that is how you can fetch marks. And like I said earlier, if uh, your teacher had given you not uh, on this poem and if you have listened to the tutoring class as well and here in this today's session also it's it was just like revision so we studied some very important uh, questions and statements and certain ideas that the poem gave us right so if you do all these things then the lesson will be very easy for you and any kind of question that comes in the exam you will be able to answer So, uh, having a perfect blend between the tutoring classes, your teacher's notes, and then listening well, and then doing personal study. So that is how you, uh, it'll help you in your exams. So that is all for this class. And in the next class, we will continue with a new lesson. Thank you so much.